Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast with Adrian B. Holmes. My name is Slavic and I have Mike with me. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about functionality of a home and how to either purchase a home that is already built and to what things to look for and um, what things to, to avoid, um, as well as whenever you're building a home, what to look for in a plan and um, what to try to avoid as much as possible. Yeah, so home design is very important. So I'm going to run by some questions and see what your thoughts are on it. Number one, what is home design or functionality of a home? So whenever whenever I started building houses, I was walking through a ton of homes. That was one thing that we did in the beginning a lot. And we would go through many different builders, whether they were national, whether they were local, and just to look for things. And there were so many times where we found dead space in a home and my wife and I, we just, we, we, we looked at it and we were like, why would somebody even do this? Um, there's a dead corner here. Why isn't there a closet space? Because, um, you know, closet space is important in a house. Oh, yeah. um, with extra storage and everything that you, you have, just to throw junk in, it's nice to have a place where you can stack your boxes or whatnot. So that is something that we, we always like to do. And then whenever you open the doors to the house, I don't like when you walk straight into a wall. That is a big no-no for me. So, I mean, even the house that you live in, whenever you open the door, there's a hallway. It's more open. And that was really the the, the design behind the home plan that you live in. Um, and on top of the other plans that we build, it's just an open floor plan, a flow to the room where when you walk in, there is defined space, as well as it's it's nice and things are uh, are open and, and feel nice and airy. So so what is dead space for those that don't know? So dead space would be, um, a, 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 how can I say this nicely? Where a lot of builders under stairs, under the stairs of the home, will just leave it blocked off and you can't access it. Well, in our homes, majority of our plans that have stairs in them have a closet underneath on, in, in the stairs. Um, and then another, uh, other ones have a f actually a half bath under the stairs. Um, so we don't allow that to be just dead space where, you know, junk collects. We put in um, closets and do things like that in order to maximize the space. And actually, you can go through a lot of our floor plans, a lot of our homes. If you remember walking through some of our houses, you'll remember seeing closets just kind of snuck away in those spaces um, avoiding dead space, avoiding dead space as much as possible. Yeah, and it makes a smaller home seem much bigger because you could actually store stuff. Like even yes. our house, we have the farmhouse plan. We love it, my wife and I. And even under the staircase, there is a, a closet. And it's not a full closet, but you can still st uh, put stuff and yes. store it, which is very convenient. Um, another question, you were talking about functionality flow. What do you mean by that? Like you were saying you walk in and it's not just a wall you're facing. So whenever you walk into a home, a lot of the homes, um, the, the way that we design them um, in-house in is uh, I like to, when you walk in, it feels airy. It feels uh, welcoming right away because there are homes where you just walk in and you're like, I want to get out of here. This is, this is horrible. It's not comfortable. It doesn't make you feel at home. And you just want to get out. So our idea with that was big hallways, if we have a hallway, make it nice and open, but then we're not to waste space on just hallways because hallways is just a place where you walk, but make it so that it's multi-use spaces um, where if you're walking into, into your home, again, the walkway serves the same purpose as whenever you're sitting at your island. That space is now used for two purposes. It's used for walkway and it's used for seating at your island. Your island is now, a, you're able to use it as a buffet whenever you have people over. Um, and then just the open concept of your floor plan. Um, it's, or, or most, majority of our floor plans are open concept. And just the flow that the home has, um, it makes it function where the living room is a defined space, yet at the same time, while it's defined, you're able to, um, if you need to extend your table when you have a lot of guests over, you're able to extend your tables into the, the living room space from your dining room. Um, just the flow of it all. And whether you have a family of one kid, no kids, or eight kids, the, the house just flows. And, and that was very, very important to us 
um, whenever we were designing our plans, as well as when we started building. That was something that we really, we really, really looked for. Um, another example is the way we, that we design bathrooms. A lot of our bathrooms have a very similar design, but we made them so that they would flow. When you walk in, everything is spaced out enough, yet it's close enough where we're not taking extra square footage. It's right there. So in other words, flow means it just makes sense. Yes. Like you, you walk in and everything's where it's supposed to be, where it's yes. not weird. Because I yes. remember when we went to Washington, remember? Oh my gosh. I so do. we walked in, it was like a three-story <laughs> home and that place had no flow at all. And what I mean by that is we walked in, the master bedroom was on the third floor. Mm -hmm. The uh, washer and dryer were on the second floor. The first room had like a patio that goes down. It made no sense. The kitchen was on the second story. It just didn't make sense. So it was super inconvenient to walk around. I'm like, okay, this makes no sense. Why would I want to take my clothing, go to the third floor, or second floor to wash it there? Why not put it on the first floor? Why is the master bedroom on the third floor and mm -hmm. the guest bedroom on the first? It made no sense. It just yeah. feels... The way I describe flow just feels weird. Like uh, mm -hmm. you kind of like get confused. Yeah, and even though there's there's some tight lots where you can't fit a big house on it, there's still a way to design a house and design a floor plan that will flow, that is easy, and that just makes it comfortable. Um, so whenever you are choosing a floor plan, um, I would recommend make sure that it flows, that it has that, that it makes sense, and it and it, and it just it works. That's yeah. very important. And, and ask the builder questions about it. Because I remember when we were picking our house, we had two floor plans that we were interested in. And I asked Slavic, we actually brought up, you're like, hey, Mike, if you're planning to have kids in the future, he's like, I'd recommend this floor plan. Because if the kid wakes up in the morning, he can cross, you don't have to walk yeah. down the stairs. So again, you know, when picking a floor plan, plan for the future, what you're planning to do, how you do. And then there's yes. pros and cons. Again, you know, uh, depends on the situation. Some people like two story better in one story. It depends what you want. Yeah. So what would you say are some pros and cons to a one-story home? So pros of a one-story home, I would say, is that everything's on the main level. So no matter your age, whether you're uh, older in age or younger in age, what's nice about if you have a small family or starter family, everybody's on the on the first floor. You don't have kids going up the stairs and down the stairs. Your kids are not falling. You know, especially babies, when they start crawling around, they're just all over the place. But this is everything's on one floor, so you're now you're cutting out stairs. Um and that's, that's one thing that I do like. Um, for older people, stairs are hard whenever they go with age. So keep it all on one level is, is nice. Um, pros of a two-story home is now you're going vertical instead of uh, horizontal. So now you're able to get more square footage. Vertical building normally is less expensive. So whenever you're you know stacking floors on top of each other, it's it's less expensive you can fit more on a smaller lot uh, more square footage but at the same time you are able to have you know when if your kids are teenagers two-story home is perfect it works really really good um so yes there's pros and yes there's cons i mean like i live in a two-story home was it my choice no but we have a, a two-story home and it works it flows all the kids are upstairs we're downstairs on the main floor and um you know it functions and it works really well yeah, and another thing I want to say about a two-story floor plan, you can serve, like we have a floor plan to Delta or Delamont, where you can serve people on the first floor and the second floor. There's no reason for anybody to ever go up there. So if you like the yes. privacy or like that, where everybody's on the first floor and then your family lives on a second, that's a very convenient thing. Again, there's no right and wrong yeah. choice. It's just depending on what makes sense for you. And when we're talking about one story, all of our one-story homes still come with a bonus room or mm -hmm. some bonus space upstairs. But the primary yeah. living is on the first floor. The nice benefit about having a two-story home is having the living quarters on the second floor, like you just said. And on the first floor is all entertainment space. So when guests come over, they just stay downstairs. And then the second floor would have that living quarters, which is very nice. Yeah, It just depends on the situation, what you want. Personally, I like one-story homes, but at the same time, I can see myself getting a two-story home because, like Savik was saying, you can entertain the guest and they don't have to go upstairs and see mm -hmm. where you live and all that. What would you say is an important question to ask when looking at floor plans? How often has this house been built? And if it's a new house where you're coming to a builder and you want the home built for you, is um, where have you built this house before? You want to walk through it? 
And if it's a house that's already been built, you're able to kind of walk through it and see things. Um, very important question is that just ask the builder the function of the home, what he thinks, because as builders, we see things, even though we build these floor plans over and over again, um, yes, we change up things once in a while, we'll do a little bit different, but ask the builder, what would he do? Or what would he have done different in this home if it was his? And that is where a lot of times you'll start seeing functionality come out where the builder, me as the builder, I would say, you know, I don't like this about this floor plan. You would have to extend the home two extra feet to fix it. But because we are on a budget and we're doing it, that's why we do it this way. So that is something that, what, what is something that you would change as the builder to this home? I think that would be very important to ask. Yeah. And if you guys don't know, which you probably don't, Anytime we build a floor plan, Slavic will get it revised in-house and we go over the plan. So we're building the same farmhouse, same land, or Dolomont, but it's constantly getting revision because once you build it and you walk there, like, I got to adjust that, I got to change that. So like Slavic was saying, you know, ask him, was it built before? How many times can I look at it? Can I tour it? Because that makes a difference. Yeah, we actually have, I mean, I know you're supposed to talk positivity, but we had one house plan that every time we built it, we had an issue with one plumbing pipe every single time we built the house. I don't know if you remember, the, the pipe would always bulge out on one wall. And no matter what we did, we moved it, we tried to shift things over, we, we, we did things so many times and it would still show. So we had to redesign the floor plan just to eliminate that issue. And it really wasn't an issue of water leaking or anything. It was an aesthetic that I didn't like, that there was a half inch bulge in, in a wall and just to eliminate that, you know, as a builder, we, we, we try to move things around. Um, we've built houses that we've, we've moved stairs. And even though it's the same floor plan, but we've moved stairs around just to make sure that the house functions and that it fulfills the purpose that it was created for. What's another question you would ask? Another question that I would ask when building a new house. Yes, yeah, so or picking a floor plan. Because the first one you answered was, you know, what would you change as a builder? What would you improve on? What is, what can I afford would be a really good question. Um, a lot of times people try to get the biggest house. Like as a customer, you'll come in and like, hey, what's the biggest house that I can get for this amount of money? Well, I think as a, as a from the builder's perspective, when you come to me and say, what's the biggest house I can get? Well, you're going to get a big size house, but you're going to have it, you know, stripped down to the bare minimum. Instead, as a homeowner, I, I to a homeowner, this is me, what I would ask the, as a builder, I would say, what are your necessities? Write down what you need. Do you have a home office? Do you, um, do, do you have children? Um, what, what do you do? Do you work from home? Um, do you operate a business from home? So these are things that I would ask. And then whenever the customer relays these information, now I know what floor plan would work for them. So if a customer comes to me and says, hey, we have three kids, but I work from home, I know that they need at least a three bedroom or a four bedroom house with an office space designated for office space, not just, um, oh yeah, we have this affordable house that you can and, and just stick them in, some, in, a, in a house just to give them a house. No, you want them to function and the person that's working from home, they have to have that function in their office space or whatnot. Yeah, and it has to be intentional. Again, back to the farmhouse we own, when you walk right through a door, right to the right is an office space. Dedicated office space that if I was going to run a business, I can run it off. And if clients come, they can walk in right to the right, and then across from it, there's a bathroom. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go into the house and wander around and go through my house, which gives us privacy. And if you have kids, you don't have to worry about kids getting in the way. It's a dedicated private space. Yeah, so if you're entertaining people a lot at your house, Make sure that the flow of the home is very, very comfortable. Um, and that is very important. At Adrian B. Homes, we design most, majority of the floor plans that we build, we design them in-house. So we'll go and we'll find a floor plan that looks similar to what we like, and then we'll adjust it, we'll change it, we'll add closet space, we'll do everything to make it function perfectly for you and your family. Um, if you guys have any other questions that you would like to know about our, our construction of homes or construction in general, uh, please reach out to us, drop a comment below, um, subscribe to our channel. We're going to be posting regularly and uh, producing new content and just answering questions that you guys have. 
Um, I know that the home building industry is a big industry and there's so many different variables that happen because of city, state, or counties, but we will answer as much of our knowledge and make sure that it's factual information for you. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless, subscribe, and we will see you guys next time.